You're welcome to our Ash Wednesday service here in Clonigal in St. Felix Church. Our reader of the Old Testament will be Gillian Porter, and we will be basing the service generally on the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 338, which outlines Lent and how we identify with Christ's passion. So you'll notice during Lent we don't have the Gloria and we don't say the glory be at the end of the Psalms. So let us begin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those who were preparing for baptism at Easter and by those who were to be restored to the church's fellowship from which they had been separated through sin. In the course of time, the church came to recognize that by a careful keeping of these days, all Christians might take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. So let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we may be truly sorry for our sins and obtain from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Joel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leaves a blessing behind him? a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the con congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and let the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your Lord, your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this Ash Wednesday is Psalm 51, verses 11 to 18. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, else would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Amen. There is a green hill far away with 
without a city wall where the dear Lord was crucified who died to save us all we may not know we cannot tell what pains he had to bear but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there he died that we might be forgiven he died to make us good that we might go at last to heaven saved by his precious blood there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin he only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in oh dearly dearly has he loved and we must love him too and trust in his redeeming blood and try his works to do Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So may my words be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, today we recall the 40 days Jesus spent in the desert. After being baptised by his cousin, John the Baptist, when Jesus was about 30 years of age. Now this, as you will recall from the Bible, was a time of temptation for Jesus in the desert. You may recall he was tempted to turn stones into bread at a time when he was very, very hungry. He was also tempted by the prospect of owning vast amounts of property. And of course, Many of us in the church recognize that sometimes looking after a lot of property can distract us from the work of ministry that Jesus calls us to do. And of course, he was also tempted by the 
the enticement of being very popular if he performed um, huge miracles in public that people would flock and make him into something of a superstar. So all of these temptations were facing Jesus as he went through his 40 days, the 40 days that we now think of in Lent. And this was a time when Jesus was preparing himself for all of the other temptations he would face in his campaign, in his ministry, to build up God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So for us, the followers of Jesus today, Christ has given us this example of a special period, a period between now, Ash Wednesday and Easter, to repent, firstly, of our shortcomings, Secondly, to resolve to live more simply, more humbly, more honestly, as Jesus lived indeed. And then to essentially up our game when it comes to knowing what it means to be a Christian. So what does it mean to be a Christian in both words and in actions? Well, that's a task that perhaps we could all get together to explore. And throughout Lent, I'm inviting you to set aside on a Thursday evening, um, the Thursday evenings throughout Lent, uh, going from uh, the 25th of February, uh, set aside an hour, about eight o'clock, and we can not, of course, meet physically, but we can meet on our computer screens, as many of us are well used to doing at this stage, using a Zoom link. And each session, each Thursday, we'll take one of the five Anglican marks of mission. These were just five very simple um, statements that were agreed by the Worldwide Anglican Consultative Council that serve as a very quick, easy reference when somebody says, what does it mean to be a Christian? And we will look then, along with our Bibles, because they are all Bible-based, at what it means for us to be followers of Jesus Christ here in this Bunclody Union of Parishes. So I'll just read the invitation that I will be circulating. It's quite short. It's entitled A Lenten Discussion Group. And it says, during Lent, all of us are invited to gather on our computer screens each Thursday at 8 p.m. via a Zoom link to hear, to discuss with reference to the Bible and pray about who we are as a church by exploring each of the five Anglican marks of mission, one each week. First mark of mission, very central, is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And we look at that on February the 25th at eight o'clock. The second one, is to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. And we look at that on the 4th of March. Third one is to respond to human need by loving service. A very practical one, which we will look at on the 11th of March. The fourth one, which is the longest really, in words anyway, it says to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and pursue peace and reconciliation. And we look at that on the day after St. Patrick's Day, on the 18th of March. And the fifth and final one, but they're all interrelated, so there's no hierarchy, but the fifth one is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And that's on Thursday, the 25th of March, the last Thursday before Holy Week. So I'm inviting you to email me, sergeant at tcd.ie, to express your interest. And when I get your email, then I can send the Zoom link to you for each of the sessions. And that will be done in advance. Uh, of each of the Thursday evening meetings. There's no obligation, of course, if you get the email and you're busy, well, that's life and nobody will worry about it. But if you are available, it would be lovely to see you on the screen. 
Uh, it's one way to get to meet people in this pandemic. So looking forward to seeing you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. We hear the commandments which God gave to his people and we take them to heart. First commandment. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Second you shall not make for yourself any idol. Third, you shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. Fourth, remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Fifth, honor your father and your mother. Sixth, you shall not commit murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not be a false witness. And ten, you shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glorious God and Father, you have given your Son for us all, that his death might be our life, and his affliction our peace. We pray for those who suffer, the hungry, refugees, prisoners, those who are persecuted, all who bring sin and suffering to others, and all who seek to bring care and relief. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As Jesus taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>